So friends, you may or may not be aware that <laughs> this year there's been some books on TBR Cluedo that I haven't read. I haven't read them. And in this vlog today, we are gonna be trying to tick off as many of them as we can in a very limited time frame. <laughs> so I did some research. Last year, I had out of 72 books that appeared on TBR Cluedo, I did not read four of them in 2022. Now, if you're thinking, Megan, are you gonna try and like get that down to the same number this year? No, because <laughs> we're gonna have to be the same every year. Well, she tried, at least, you know, she, but so far this year, or this year, because we haven't got any more months in the year, these are the nine books that have appeared on TBR Cluedo that I have not read, okay? And we are gonna be trying to read as many of them as we can in 72 hours, just because of how reading for the Goodreads video, reading for wrapped up episodes, reading for my Patreon book club, we have 72 hours <laughs> to read as many of these as we can. And I'm not gonna put a ton of pressure on myself to read like, five or six of them. I'm just gonna try and read as many as I can whilst also living my life and doing Christmassy things and doing things with family, etc., etc. is the plan. So if I only read two, I'm happy, but I would like to get a few more ticked off. Now, out of the nine, there are three that we are not going to be trying to read in this video. The first of those is The Floating Admiral by The Detection Club. This was on TBR Cluedo for a vlog that I ended up not having time to fit in my schedule. I had to move some things around and this was the video that bit the dust, shall we say. So I will be reading this next year and doing the video for that. And then out of this stack, there are two starts of series, possibly three, I'm gonna have to consult my patrons. There are two that are definitely starts of series and I'm just not starting a series in the last couple of weeks of December. That is self-sabotage, we do not need to do that. So I am not gonna be reading Nevermore, The Child of Morgan Crow, which I know a lot of you might be disappointed by, <laughs> but you know, I'm not starting a series in December. <laughs> can't ask me to do that. I can't do it. My heart is saying no. I do really want to read this though in the in the new year. And then we also have The Gilded Walls by Roshani Chotsky, another start of a series, another book that I really want to get round to and read, but start of a series, so we're not going to try and read it. I also do have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, and on Goodreads this is marked as a series, but can you guys please tell me? Well, no, I'm gonna have to find out this answer before this vlog. But would you class as a series or would you class these books as companion books? Because often for me, what is classed as a romance series are more companion books. I class the Talia Hibbert Brown Sisters series as a series, but the Abby Jimenez Part of Your World, Yours Truly, I class them more as companion books. And from my research, I can't really tell what the connections between the books in this series are. So for now, I'm not classing this as a series. I will ask my patrons though and make a decision. So these are the one, two, three, there's six books here that we could read in this vlog. I'm probably aiming for two to three of them <laughs> to get read before the end of the year. Um, but I'm excited. I got lots of fun plans coming up in the next couple of days. I didn't tell you. So the time limit is because it is currently Thursday afternoon and this video has to go up on Sunday evening. But in terms of exporting the video, uploading it, I probably need to be done reading by like midday on Sunday. So that's 72 hours, give or take. <laughs> for us to read these books. In terms of what I'm gonna start with, actually, let me show you what's in the stack while our options are. So, like I said, we have got Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by Selena Godden, Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher, Escaping from Houdini by Kerry Maniscalco, The Other Side of Mrs. Wood by Lucy Barker, and Take My Hand by Deline Perkins Valdez. In terms of what I'm gonna start with, I think I'm gonna start with the one I'm most excited to read, and that is Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher. I'm falling in love with T. King Fisher. I think I've given her is it two 4.5s or one 4 and a 4.5? I'm not sure, but something around that. And this was almost one of the books I chose to read as my first book of the year because I thought it was gonna be five stars. <laughs> but we'll see what I think of it. I'm gonna read this today. I've got the audiobook as well, and I'm just excited for this fairy tale. This is really my first proper fantasy from T. King Fisher. I've read more of her horror stuff. So I'm very excited to start with this one. It's definitely one of my most anticipated books that I wanna get to before the end of the year and before I do my best books of the year list, because this could be on there, who knows? So I'm very excited. We're gonna start with this. I'll check in with you when I'm about halfway through. Good morning. I'm aware I look kind of funny <laughs> with my hair in plaits and 
still in my pajamas, but I'm not gonna get changed to put makeup on because then I, I will get foundation. I get foundation on everything when <laughs> I'm getting ready. But how are we? I am halfway into Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher, and I'm really, really enjoying it. So basically, all you need to know about it is it's about this woman who wants to save her sister from the abusive prince that she's married to, and to do so, she has to kind of complete these impossible tasks and then go on this quest with kind of this found family. There's a hen, there's an evil hen, a hen that's got the de a, de a devil in it. <laughs> Let's just say the devil made me do it. I love it. And there's a bone dog, a dog made up of bones. I love it. And that's basically all you need to know. And it's just this lovely little fairy tale like story. It's my first T. King Fisher that's a fantasy. I've read her horror before. And it does feel like a little bit of a different tone, but it's a tone that I'm really enjoying. If I had to compare it to someone, I would say Sean and Maguire. It's reminding me a lot of Sean and Maguire's kind of whimsy and fairy tale likeness and gentleness. I don't know. I'm just, I'm really enjoying it doesn't necessarily feel like a five star. I feel like I've given Tiki Fisher so far a four and a 4.5. So, so far, all of her books have been really up there. But she hasn't got five from me yet. I don't know why. <laughs> it's out there. I know it exists. <laughs> but this is feeling like another four or 4.5. But I'm really loving the found family relationships. I'm really loving the quest. The audiobook's nice. It's not a super, like, I don't feel like there's a ton to say. It's just a nice book. It's a nice book, you know? And I love anything that's got a fairy tale like twist to it, but a bit darker. I'm not, I realize I'm not the biggest fan of like YA fairy tale retellings that like, oh, I don't know how to explain it. They can be dark, like Cinderella is Dead, for example, I didn't enjoy. Dark things happen in that, but tonally it's not, there's, there's not this like almost sarcasm or like dry humor to it. And I think that's what I enjoy paired with a fairy tale like retelling, but it's good. I'm really enjoying it. And I'm glad I'm finally getting around to it because I almost read it as my first book of the year. <laughs> and um, now I could be reading it as one of my last books of the year. But today I'm getting ready because me and Tom are going into London to do some Christmas shopping. <laughs> I'm so excited. We're gonna go, I'm gonna go look for some clothes. I just feel the need to completely redo my whole wardrobe. <laughs> I just don't like any of my clothes anymore. So I made a decision across Christmas and then my birthday's in January to just get a lot of clothes basically. <laughs> I also, I don't buy clothes very often. Like some of my new, newer clothes are like ones I got to go to uni five years ago. Like I really, I don't buy clothes very often. So I just feel like I need a refresh. <laughs> but anyways, I'm very excited to go into London, maybe see some Christmas decorations, feel all Christmassy. So I'll take you along with me a little bit, but um, yeah, I'm gonna keep reading Netter Than Bone on the train um, while we're there. And I'm gonna listen to the audiobook now as I get ready as well, so. See you in a bit. So I finished Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher and it's gonna be four stars. I really enjoyed it, but I almost don't have anything to say. <laughs> I don't got anything to say. I don't know if I've just reached the end of the year, guys, and I'm just like, <laughs> I've read 150 books the best time ever. I just kind of feel like I really enjoyed this, but I don't know what to tell you. Tell you. It's dark, it's a modern twist on a fairy tale, it's funny. I think the humour of this really is a, is one of the plus points to me. It's just not quite a five star. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's just not quite a five star. But it's close, but it's not quite a five star. Something I do enjoy about this, and the more I read kind of fairy tale inspired, books is seeing books talk about the same elements but kind of adapt them in new and different ways like for example um the goblin market <laughs> i never encountered the goblin market before i read um in an absent dream by sean mcguire where that's like the setting and i thought sean mcguire came up with that i'm gonna be quite honest with you but it seems like it's a uh, <laughs> widely recognized <laughs> phenomenon but it's just interesting seeing these ideas and places and themes come up in different books but see 
the different ways that they've been adapted. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Not my favorite Tea King Fisher, but I, I, I just, I don't know what's wrong with me guys. I'm feeling a little bit burnt out from reading, I think. I don't know. It's Saturday evening. You last saw me, so we went shopping yesterday and Friday and we got back at like 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> It was a long, it was a full day um, outing. So let's be honest, I'm only gonna read one more book in this vlog. I did really wanna try and read three, but we're only reading two. So we have got Escaping from Houdini by Karen Maniscalco, brought to Tom's and Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death. And really I should read Escaping from Houdini because I should make progress in the series, especially because when I did my series check-in video, I marked this as red because I was like, oh, I'm gonna read that for the end of the year. Then I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to read Escaping from Houdini. I don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry if I've let anyone down or if I've caused any ag, but I have to look after number one. Here's the thing. This series, I do want to finish it, but it's this is never going to be anything more than a three or a four. I, it's never gonna be anything more than a three or four. So I am gonna read Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death because I feel like this is, I mean, I'm filming my best books of the year video on like Monday or Tuesday. And so I feel like this, if any, if either of these two have a chance to get in there, it's this one. Cause I know this one is very unique and very strange and very weird. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death. Sorry, just it, forget the fact that I put this, Mark, this was read in my series check-in and that may have affected a few of the stats. Just forget that. We're gonna forget that. We're gonna <laughs> expunge that from our memory. So I'm gonna go start Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death. I don't know if I'll get halfway through tonight. If so, I will check in with you with my thoughts, but I'm very excited. I'm very excited to give this a go. Um, it's the next day, it's Sunday, so I've only got till this afternoon to read this, but it's a very quick read. I'm 90 pages in, I did want to get halfway before I checked <laughs> before I checked in with you. But we're about to go out for a walk, and I'm probably going to read most of what's left on the way there and the way back in the car. So I need to check in with you now. Since I'm only 90 pages in, I'm really not sure what I think about it yet, <laughs> I'm completely honest with you. So we're following two characters, we're following Mrs. Death who is Mrs. Death, she creates death, she oversees death, and she meets Wolf, who is a troubled young writer. And we're really following Wolf's backstory as well, and Wolf's very much living in poverty, and I don't know much more than that yet. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. I love it. It's very strange. We've had like interludes with Wolf's dreams that are written in a very unique way, like very like three words with dashes, three words with dashes, like a kind of ongoing sentence. And there's some parts that are more poetry and then we're reading, I'm in the middle of like an interview between Mrs. Death and Wolf. So there's a lot of elements that are written in interesting ways. I'm enjoying it. Also the audiobook is narrated by the author, which I haven't listened to that in a fiction book for a really long time. Often non-fiction books, particularly like memoir, or stuff um, are narrated by the author, but I haven't read a fiction book narrated by the author in a really long time and I'm enjoying it. I feel like, especially with a book like this, you know, Selena Godin knows more, knows better than anyone the cadence, the exact cadence of the words. And I think that's important in a book like this, really how it flows and the intonation on certain parts. It's almost like, a, a performance art piece hearing it, hearing her narrate it. So that's really adding um, a really, really great element to it for me. And I'm, listen, I'm just gonna go read the rest, which I know is the bulk of the book. I'm still not really sure what I think of it. I still could love it or not love it. <laughs> A very myself for checking, but I think I probably would still feel the same if I checked in with you halfway. I think it's the kind of book that you have to finish to really know what you think of it. You know, it's so short and it's strange, and like you're kind of grappling with everything that the book is trying to do. It's not like a traditional genre fiction that I read with fantasy or mystery, where you come at it with certain conventions that kind of help you you understand right away kind of what the parameters of the book are and what it's trying to do. This is so unique that you are, I feel like throughout the whole book, trying to acquaint yourself with what it's trying to do. So I'm gonna go continue listening to the audiobook and reading this, and I will probably check in with you once we're back from the walk. Um, and then yeah, 
I'm, I'm excited. I think it's very unique. Also talking a lot about like deaths that Mrs. Death has encountered. I'm enjoying it. So I will check in with you once I've finished it and then we'll have ticked two books of TBR Cluedo, which is better than nothing. <laughs> okay, who wanted to say hi? Get a Christmas dog. It's a Christmas dog. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie, are you a Christmas dog who keeps eating Christmas <laughs> cookies? <laughs> 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 Are you a cutie? Hello. Oh. He says, let me get those Christmas cookies. <laughs> You know when you've been on like a cold winter's day walk? I just want to go have a nap. But I can't because I have to finish this vlog up for you. <laughs> it's all your fault. No, I'm kidding. Um, I finished Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death. Okay. <laughs> I want to simultaneously say, yes, I was right. And this is the kind of book you can't really um, review midway. You have to kind of read the entirety of it. And then by the end, I completely understand what this book is trying to do. I completely understand what we we're going for. I think it achieved it. But also I want to say, I am perhaps too dumb for this book. That alone tells you how stupid you are. I don't read books like this, guys. Or I do once in the blue moon. I, perhaps this did not strike me at the most perfect time. Because this book is very clever. <laughs> And I understood everything it's saying. Oh, I'm like choking. <laughs> Mrs. Death is coming for me. I understood everything it was trying to say, but do I really think I unpacked everything to the depth that it could be and really dove into the book? And like, I think you could read this two or three times to really take everything in and read it with the audiobook and read it just physically. I just think there's a lot that you can glean from this book. This is not sitting nicely on this. <laughs> It's like we're on a bouncy castle. I think there's a lot that you can glean from this book and I'm not necessarily gleaning it, you know? But I did really enjoy it. By the end, I fully understand what we're going for. I really don't want to tell you anything because I think this is the kind of book that you should go into blindly. But if you like clever books, I think you'll enjoy this. I just like silly murder mysteries, guys. And all cozy fantasies with fucking elves making tea shops. What is there to say? <laughs> This is obviously about death and I think the way it examines like particularly I didn't expect it to go into kind of like pop not pop culture well it does go into pop culture a bit but then also kind of histories of killers and death I thought was very interesting um and it's you know this is a very experimental piece of fiction I was looking it's quite it's got quite a low rating and I do understand why have I told you why I'm rating it I'm gonna give it a 3.5 I really did enjoy it I think on another day this could have been a 4 or 4.5 had I gleaned more from it I think it's the kind of book that like has to hit you at the right moment, on the right day, with the right vibe, you know what I mean? I, I do think the, that this book, the way that it talks about life and talks about living and like indirectly talks about wanting to appreciate life and appreciate being here and being thankful and seizing the moment, seizing the day, I think was very interesting. And it simultaneously combines this dark subject matter with quite a a positive at times, <laughs> it's hard to explain, the at times positive outlook on life. I think it's a very interesting book and I would recommend picking it up just to see what you think of it. I don't think all of you will love it, but I do recommend picking it up to see what you think of it. Well, everyone, we completed two more books that were on TBR Cluedo this year that I had not read. So I believe per my calculations, this could be incorrect, but I believe per my calculations out of the 70 books that were on TBR Cluedo this year, because we had two duplicates throughout the year, out of the 70 books on TBR Cluedo, I read 63, which isn't bad. You know, I because I'm a completionist, I feel pressure for that number to be 70. Do you know what I mean? To have read every single book. But no one out there, no booktuber, if you go watch back, spoiler alert, if you go watch back everyone, monthly TVRs. No one's gonna have read every single book. Well, here's the tea. I'm happy, 63 out of 70. That's what, 90%? I've read 90% of the books or on TV I've read those. Yeah, that's fine, it's fine. <laughs> and I just wanna apologize. I feel like this vlog has not been my best. Um, seasonal effect disorder is, is slipping in a little bit and I'm trying to resist it, but the past couple days, I think it's impeded my ability to talk about stuff a little bit. I'm just not quite feeling myself and I can just, I know the feeling. I've been with this 
for over a decade now. And um, I just know when it's starting to creep its way in. And so that's been taking up a lot of my mental space, I think. So apologies if this vlog wasn't as good as usual. But my next two vlogs are very exciting. We've got a wrapped up coming before Christmas and then we've got a reading Christmassy murder mysteries coming before Christmas. I'm very excited for both of them. So they'll be coming over the next week or so. And I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.